Hi, I'm Sean Yeo, and welcome back to Forward Together. Thanks for joining us again. For this podcast, I'm reading the 2019 platform of the Green Party of Canada. Every part. But I'm doing it over nine easy-to-listen-to episodes. I hope that this is a great way for you to learn about our platform. I know not everyone likes reading long documents, and not everyone can find the time to read something this long. That's why I'm doing this. We're also committed to being inclusive in how we share our platform, and we want to make this material accessible to as many Canadians as possible. With this podcast, you basically have an audiobook of the Green Party platform, so you can learn what the Green Party is all about while you're on your way to work, or out for a run, or whatever you love to do while you listen to podcasts. Now, to get the platform yourself, just go to greenparty.ca slash platform. And to find out who your local Green Party candidate is, go to greenparty.ca slash candidates. All you have to do is put in your postal code and it'll look up your candidate for you. However you're listening, welcome. And we'd love to hear from you. So you can email us at platformpodcast2019 at gmail.com. If you have any platform questions or feedback, we'd love to hear from you. We'll read everything that you send us and do our best to reply as well. We're hoping to be able to share some of the questions and feedback as well. So if you'd prefer we don't share your comments, please mention that in your message. All right, let's get started with episode three. In this episode, we're going to cover the green vision for addressing the climate emergency. Addressing the climate emergency. Quote, our house is on fire. I am here to say, our house is on fire. I want you to act as you would in a crisis. I want you to act as if our house is on fire, because it is. We cannot solve a crisis without treating it as a crisis. And if solutions within the system are so impossible to find, then maybe we should change the system itself. That quote was by youth climate activist Greta Thunberg at her speech to the World Economic Forum, January 2019. On June 17, 2019, the Canadian Parliament followed the example of several other countries, states, provinces, and dozens of Canadian municipalities, and passed a resolution declaring we are in a climate emergency. The next day, the Liberal government, supported by the Conservative opposition, announced its approval with public funding of at least 10 to $13 billion of the expansion of the Trans Mountain Pipeline, a project that will enable the expansion of bitumen mining in northern Alberta and, in turn, growth in Canada's climate-changing pollution. This is not treating the climate crisis as an emergency. Time has run out on this kind of political doublespeak. We must take on our responsibilities as grown-ups or accept Greta's condemnation. Quote, If we fail, all our achievements and progress have been for nothing, and all that will remain of our political leader's legacy will be the greatest failure of human history. And they will be remembered as the greatest villains of all time because they have chosen not to listen and not to act. End quote. Greta Thunberg speeched to the European Economic and Society Committee February 2019. The Green Party has been telling the truth about global warming and climate change for decades. Alone among political parties, the Green Party has a climate emergency response plan that recognizes our house is on fire. We call it Mission Possible. Mission Possible, the challenge. Climate scientists tell us that if the world does not hold global warming to no more than 1.5 degrees Celsius, global average temperature increases above the 1850 baseline, we risk triggering runaway heating and a climate catastrophe. Already, the Earth has warmed by 1 degree Celsius on average. Canada has warmed by 2 degrees Celsius and the Arctic by 3 to 4 degrees Celsius. Even this level of warming is producing unprecedented heat waves, polar ice melting, flooding, and extreme storms. To hold to this critical limit, global emissions of climate-changing pollutants, carbon dioxide, methane, and nitrous oxide, 
must be cut by about half by 2030, and we must get to net zero emissions by 2050. Carbon dioxide is by far the largest contributor to climate pollution. In Canada, most of our carbon dioxide emissions, 54%, come from producing and burning coal, oil, and natural gas. Transportation adds another 28%. Industrial agriculture contributes methane from livestock and nitrous oxide from fertilizer, totaling 8% of climate pollution, followed by non-energy heavy industries, 7.5% 7, 7 and methane from solid waste landfills. 2.5%. The current federal target is a 30% reduction in greenhouse gas emissions below 2005 levels by 2030. This was set by Conservative Prime Minister Harper in 2015 and adopted by Liberal Prime Minister Trudeau in 2016. Not only is this too low, the Liberal and Conservative climate action plans will not even achieve that insufficient reduction let alone the target that climate scientists say we must meet. A Green government will pass into law a Climate Change Act requiring a 60% cut in climate changing emissions below 2005 levels by 2030, reaching net zero in 2050. Interim targets would be set at five-year intervals beginning with 2025. To achieve this, the Government of Canada must utilize every tool in the federal toolkit, including regulations, public spending, and pollution pricing. Indigenous leadership is critical to the climate goals of Mission Possible. Mission Possible, the Green Climate Emergency Action Plan. We have a number of UN Sustainable Development Goals uh, linked here. Uh, if you want to know more about those, we listed them all in Episode 2. The SDGs uh, that are relevant to this part of our platform are zero hunger, clean water and sanitation, affordable and clean energy, decent work and economic growth, industry, innovation and infrastructure, sustainable cities and communities, climate action and life on land. Establish a cross-party inner cabinet to deal with climate change to limit the destructive impact of partisan politics, which has thwarted strong climate action for two decades. Its mandate would be to ensure that Canada does its part to limit global warming to a level civilization can survive and mitigate the impacts of climate change on Canadians. Set legal emissions limits for industries that decline over time with penalties for exceeding those limits. Maintain a broad-based, revenue-neutral carbon fee on all sources of carbon dioxide pollution. Revenues from the carbon fee would be returned to Canadians as a dividend. Energy. Since producing and burning fossil fuels is the largest source of emissions, we need to keep fossil fuels in the ground and retool society to run on non-polluting renewable energy sources. This is entirely possible. According to the studies, by the Stanford University researchers and the Deep Decarbonization Pathways Project. No new pipelines or coal, oil or gas drilling or mining, including offshore wells, will be approved. Existing oil and gas operations will continue on a declining basis with bitumen production phased out between 2030 and 2035. Hydraulic fracturing, fracking, Operations will be banned outright due to impacts on groundwater quality, methane release, and seismic activity. Cancel the Trans Mountain Pipeline and its $10 to $13 billion cost, as well as other subsidies to fossil fuel industries, totaling an additional several billion dollars a year. This money will be redirected to the Canadian grid strategy and renewable energy transition. Implement a major ramp-up of renewable electricity. By 2030, 100% of Canada's electricity will come from renewable sources. This includes getting remote and northern communities off diesel generators. To enable renewable electricity to flow across provincial and territorial boundaries, implement a national electrical grid strategy, including building connections between eastern Manitoba and western Ontario, in upgrading connections between New Brunswick and Nova Scotia. 
This will be paid for with money now allocated for expanding the Trans Mountain Pipeline. $1.6 billion announced in December 2018 towards an estimated $10 to $13 billion. And create thousands of jobs nationwide. Work with provincial governments to determine which orphaned oil and gas wells are geologically suited to, to produce geothermal energy. This will turn provincial liabilities into potential income-generating renewable energy, ideally in partnership with First Nations. Those with weaker geothermal energy potential may be used in district energy, including for greenhouses. Buildings. Launch a massive energy efficiency retrofit of residential, commercial, and institutional buildings. To make a renewable energy transition possible, we have to eliminate energy waste. According to trade union research, this will create over 4 million jobs. Finance building retrofits and installation of renewable energy technologies such as solar and heat pumps through direct grants, zero interest loans, and repayments based on energy cost savings. Change the National Building Code to require new construction to meet net zero emission standards by 2030 and work with the provinces to enact it. Transportation. The transportation sector produces over a quarter of Canada's climate pollution, and this is growing. A green government will develop a national transportation strategy with a goal of reaching zero carbon public ground transportation everywhere in Canada by 2040. Rail will be the hub, with spokes of light rail and electric bus connections. This includes service to rural and remote communities since everyone in Canada must have access to reliable transportation options at affordable rates. Besides reducing pollution, this measure responds to the findings of the inquiry into missing and murdered Indigenous women and girls. To get there, Canada needs regulations to shift from gasoline-powered transportation. Ban the sale of internal combustion engine passenger vehicles by 2030. Exempt new and used electric and zero emission vehicles from federal sales tax. Expand charging stations for electric vehicles, including all parking lots associated with federal facilities. Maximize emissions reductions in all transportation through the use of sustainably produced biofuels made from waste wood byproducts and used vegetable oils, where electric and fuel cells are not viable, as is the case for fishing, mining, and forestry equipment. Enact the Via Rail Act to implement a passenger rail transportation policy. Invest $600 million in the 2020-2021 year rising to 720 million by 2023 to develop regional rail networks and strengthen rail connections between regions. This will include building several sections of 10 kilometer tracks to avoid bottlenecks where heavy freight pushes passenger rail to the side. Build high-speed rail in the Toronto, Ottawa, Quebec Triangle and the Calgary Edmonton Corridor. Require all passenger ferries to convert to electric or hybrid systems by 2030. Create a national cycling and walking infrastructure fund to help support zero emissions active transportation. Develop a green freight transport program to address greenhouse gas emissions and pollution in partnership with the freight industry, shipping companies and delivery businesses. Fund the rerouting of tracks for freights and rail yards away from populated areas and strengthen Canada's rail safety rules, giving regulators the tools they need to protect neighbourhoods from train shipments of hazardous materials. Lead an international effort to bring international shipping and aviation into the Paris framework. Introduce an international tax for aviation and shipping fuels earmarked for the Global Climate Fund. Agriculture in August 2019, climate scientists released a report warning that agriculture must be transformed in order to meet climate change goals. Canada has a huge opportunity to become a world leader in reversing climate change through regenerative agricultural practices. The soil will be the unsung hero, a game changer in fighting climate change. Implement national standards for reducing the use of nitrogen fertilizers in crop agriculture 
reducing erosion and rebuilding soils to retain carbon and transitioning away from industrial livestock production. See food and food security. Support the transition of industrial agricultural systems to regenerative agriculture. See food and food security. Adapting to climate change, investing in critical infrastructure. Even the one degree warming already reached is producing unusually severe flooding, fires, drought, and extreme weather events. It is essential that public infrastructure and natural landscapes can withstand and protect Canadians from natural and climate change induced disasters. Direct the Canada Infrastructure Bank, revamped to exclude private profit and infrastructure, to invest in climate proofing essential infrastructure, prioritizing upgrades to drinking water and wastewater systems to protect against flooding, droughts, and contamination. Use the existing Green Infrastructure Fund, launch a national program to restore natural buffer zones along waterways and carbon sinks through ecologically sound tree planting and soil rebuilding. Invoke federal powers for peace, order, and good government to develop non-commercial aspects of forest management, such as 